okay. called Caucasian female body hair in American culture. To convince women that underarm and leg hair was wrong. There's nothing more natural than this enormous bush I've got growing under each arm. Having hair is natural. What's the deal with Anglo-Saxons? I mean, go to England. The women there don't shave their underarms. It's really quite attractive. You just need to focus your eyes to look for healthy signs and not the signs of socialized barbarism, like shaving or wearing deodorant or birthing in a hospital, rather than the open air like a wolf cub. Remember Brother Romulus and Noble Remus? Wolf Remus. I find this really interesting. Not really, but I say this because I'm told to. I'll be back on K-Chat after these messages from our sponsor. A Barewell Ranch old people don't sit around stagnating watching game shows and talking about the good old days, sinking into the grave in a urine-soaked mess. At Barewell Ranch, they sweat and toil until the breaking point and keep that miserable contemplation of mortality at bay. Hell, at steering time, we'll work Grandpa so hard he'll wish he was dead. At the end of the day, he'll sit down in the bluegrass, eat a bowl of commemorative beans, and enjoy sing-alongs at one of our nightly funerals. It's the Cowboys go. Work hard, don't shower, and die in your boots. Right north, ah, uh, prostate. Farewell Ranch, the only way to ride into the sunset. It's the knife that saved America. If you like the film Exploder, you'll love this enormous commemorative survival knife. In the handle, you'll find all of the things you'll need in any wilderness, disaster situation, or the jungle of your backyard. It comes complete with fishing line, needle and thread for sewing gashes back together, and an incredibly useful and durable toothpick. Damn, go on without me! I got toughy sucking tooth! It's okay, Ho Chi. Try this! For those unplanned extended stays in the jungle, there's a saw for building your own hut, toilet paper, and a fold-out woman for company, as well as a serrated blade that can kill a man before he can scream. That'll show you. The Exploder Survival Knife. It's the knife that saved America. Now, it can save you. Locks. Germs are like so gross. Oh, hi, I'm Amy and you're on K-Chat. Dissemony. I can't get over how familiar you are. Oh, right, Amy. I really hope you read my book. The mysteries of the absolute can never be explained. Mother Nature knows more than all of us. That's what keeps people coming back for more. People are turning into zombies. A roof separates you from the sunshine in the morning. A bed separates you from the loving earth at night. That's what's so great about learning these things. When you're no longer oppressed by the cultural pressures of making money or showering or wiping yourself after using a toilet, you can focus on the important things. Do you travel, Amy? Well, I've been up north to the theme park, and last week, I went to the beach. No, really travel. My coven has been meeting every Thursday, Saturday, to prepare for a grand coracle journey, along the same route we took when our people came from Russia and Alaska along the Bering Strait. What's a coracle? Oh, is that like a Maibatsu? Mm-mm. I prefer American cars. <laughs> no. <laughs> coracle. Cora means Arabian gazelle which we all know was the daughter of Zeus, and call means gather grass and sew it together. A coracle. There are so many wonderful things you can learn from the ancient Britons, Amy, like metallurgy and how to cauterize the wound when a bear has eaten your arm. Everyone used to have a coracle, Amy, even people who were scared of water. We're all about working to preserve the diversity of natural life. Reuse everything. Question, who's this we? My coven. Like witches? No, yeah, yeah, yes, but not witches like you think. 
We're just a group of people who believe in communal sharing and chanting a lot and can't find husbands. Reading magazines, cloaks, wands, horned gods, rubbing your skin raw with rocks, dying of old age at 27, crying in terror when it starts to thunder, and these are all the things our ancestors did. Since I found my new mind and body, things have really changed for me. Our modern society only celebrates a select few. Every woman and every man is a star in the sky, Amy. Not just the ones that sing on TV or those people in the movies. I think I know what you need to separate your reflection from your true self. A Zen garden. Oh, my brother had one of those and the federales came. Uh, no, 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 no. Zen's. It teaches you things like that death isn't an end. It's just a stage and also a beginning of a new journey. Do you have a leader in this weirdo cult of yours? Not a cult, a coven. There's a big difference. Yes, our leader's name is Phil. That's a weird name for a leader of a group of witches. Oh, hi, Phil. What hairy legs you've got. What with being a man who's a witch and everything. <laughs> Do not disrespect Phil. He teaches us the wheel of the year, Amy. It's full of solar holidays and goes round and round and round. You can learn a lot from the sun and moon. If you look at the sun for too long, you can go blind, meaning it is something to be respected. And the moon has a dark side, just like we do. And some people have craters and only a sixth of gravity. The ancient Britons knew the moon could breathe. We can change the world, rearrange the world. It's dying, though, Amy, and it needs some mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, like a swan or a fish on a hook. If you take your nervous system seriously, if you take your organs seriously and explore them, some really neat things can happen. Phil taught us that. of the knife. Oh, great. Why does everyone have to be packing sharp things? The knife ceremony is very important and spiritual. It's an ancient one-person personal crisis. You say to yourself, I'm going to have a spiritual experience or thrust this thing into my head. Life actors never rehearse and need no script, Amy. That was said by somebody really spaced out. And I'm going to say it again, like the wind which keeps blowing, or the sun which shines with life. Will you please leave? You smell and you talk really weird and you're just really gross. Not until I tell people out there, become an internationalist. Learn oral traditions. Learn to respect life. Make war on machines. Marry your mother. Technology will enslave us. Buy my book! It's it's printed on bar. Okay, okay. Let's take a quick call. Hello, you're on K-Chat. What's your name? Hey, it's Emmanuel from Front Island. I love the show. Yeah, I want to talk about technology enslaving us. You know that play, In the Future There Will Be Robots? Well, that's a true story. In the future, there will be robots. This. That's why they destroyed the computers that created things faster and more efficient and took their jobs. Oh, shut up. Computers aren't evil. It's the people that program the computers that are evil. That's a pretty big difference. I'm talking to you through a computer right now. In fact, I am a computer. Well, anything that can think faster than me is evil. Anything which doesn't dance or sing or cry or wear a smock. You create your own reality. We are like the dust in the wind. We are golden. We've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Okay, okay. <gasps> I know who you remind me of. My Aunt Susan. Oh, she was single too. I'm not single, Amy. I share my life with a number of valuable partners, and we commune with each other in a non-judgmental, expressive way. Old maid, my mom calls her. Anyway, let's go to the phones. You're on K-Chat. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was great, really interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm British, you see. Like our ancient wood-wearing queen, Medusa. Me, 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 Medusa. Uh, 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 uh. Um, no, I, I think actually it was, it was Bodicea, but, but no, no, not, not really. I'm from Hampshire. But you have a nanny, but she wanted health insurance. Yeah, right. That's when we got the mess He's great with the kids. Mrs. And he helps us too. Would you like your drink version? He's a great conversation piece of special voice. Please don't your phone using the phone.
Welcome back and all that stuff. You're on K-Chat with me, Amy Schechenhausen, on Vice City Station for the stars, including me. And boys, have I got a treat for you. Next up is a living school. Fantastic. No, I have one wife. I had six before that. So you downsized, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. If you want to win in life, you have to change players. You can't play on the same team all the time. So, oh my God, isn't this getting intimate, BJ? I feel like we are really connecting. I like connecting to Other men may fumble, but I go into the trenches like a dog. That's actually part of my business. What are you talking about? Well, as you know, Running the ball is like making romance. And one day when I was going for a touchdown, if you know what I'm saying, I had a great idea. You see all these fitness videos on television? It's always that idiot fool in leotards prancing about, giving it the skinny thing. And I say, what is this? I mean, what in the world is this? These people ain't fit. They ain't got a clue. When you're fit, you know. able to wrestle and pounce and hurt somebody for an hour straight. That's what people need. If someone comes to jack your ride, are you going to uh, bust a aerobic move? Hell no. But when you know how to grab another man by the face mask and twist him around and, and so he can tear his ligaments in his back and never play again, I mean, that's some real useful everyday stuff. And I should know. I didn't know. You know, I just don't want to talk about football anymore. Well, take dating or washing the car. What good is a leotard when you're washing the car? But put a man in a helmet and a cup, and he can wash the car in dignity. That's fighting fit for football. It really burns the program. The best way to get your body fit is to have total disregard for your body. Every now and then you wake up and come out of a concussion and say, damn, I look good. BJ, you talk funny. We'll be back on K- Grandpa. I made tinkles again. If you've got old people cluttering up your home, why not send them to Musty Pines? We'll help bring back dignity, and we promise it will be the best three months of their lives. They'll enjoy bingo, complaining, mumbling incoherently, skinny dipping, and organ donation. And once a month, it's our famous Lucky Dip Medication Switching Night. Musty Pines is located at a luxurious location overlooking Vice City's state-of-the-art sanitation facilities. You can still visit your old people, but now you have the comfort of knowing you don't have to. After they pass on to something better, guaranteed in three months or less, you can start enjoying their money. Finally, you can have quality family time again. Musty Pines. Now, you don't have to say goodbye. drive through service also available. He was just the boy. Deadly curse, a deranged killer, a small town in tears. Knife After Dark, rated R for retarded. Ew, that's gross, BJ. Stop hitting on me. Hi, I'm Amy, and you're on K-Chat. So, what do you need to do for BJ's fit for football? Well, Angela, anybody can do it. What you need is a real expensive gym, a team of trainers, medical practitioners, dietitians, a big crowd, and a pony who wants you dead. Dead in the dirt. I mean, a nasty, blood-sucking leech of a man who will destroy you if you don't destroy him first. A man you like set animals on. He's the enemy, and you sit in your foxhole till it's time just right, and then you pounce, baby, like a kitty cat on catnip. I'll sack a man, power drive him hard, again and again, because the idiot comes my way. I'll nail him every time. This video sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, 
and you step outside yourself like an astral projection and police go Kent State on you and, and people are crying and bleeding and, and, and pouncing each other in the face. And that's just in the locker room before the game. That's your idea of fun? Yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, mine too. That's why I'm making a comeback. I've been retired two years, and I'm telling you, selling cars or appearing in soft drink commercials is not fun. Compared to having 50,000 low IQ morons in Green Bay or, or Tampa or Liberty City or whatever, screaming how they want you dead just because you're playing for the Mambas. That's actualizing the self. Wow, that sounds interesting. Tell me about it. I am doing it. I'm fin to. Hey, wait a minute. Are you reading a book over there doing this interview? No, no, I can hardly read. Get on with it. I'm trying to, Sweets. You best listen. The comeback is a real deal. BJ... Right here, right now. Let's get it on. Of course. I, I mean, when? Uh, soon, baby. Uh, real soon. But... And don't call it a comeback. Like the song said, I'll whoop your ass. And this time, I'm doing it my way. Ignorant fools, they gave me nothing to work with. The owners, I mean. What owners are you talking about? The owners of the team. They gave me nothing. Then the reason my marriage failed. I worked my ass off all those years, sweating blood and, and puking my soul out, and they treat me like a tractor. Roll me around, treat me no better than the dogs. The guys that got hurt, they never saw a penny out of those monsters. That's just like Jade. Who's Jay? She a fox? My friend. She's a goth. She got sacked for wearing makeup and an I Hate Life t-shirt to work and never saw a penny. <laughs> she like, um, foot... Diction something. It's brutal out there. That's just like Jade. Those kids are evil little brats. Excellent! Degenitron! The Degenitron gaming system plays three exciting games, including Defender of the Faith, where you save the green dots with your fantastic flying red square. Cool! Monkey's Paradise, where you swing from green dot to green dot with your red square monkey. That's right! And Penetrator, where you smash the green dots deep inside the mysterious red square. Wow! The Degenitron brings arcade realism to your living room. It can even take quarters, and a strange, sweaty man comes by to empty the machine on Friday. Degenitron! Degenitron, fighting the evil of boredom. I'll never go to school again, Degenitron! Protects your teeth, fights infection, and lubricates your food. But what happens when you run out of saliva? Help me, I can't talk. For personal dryness upstairs, it's Salivex. Wow, I can spit again. Salivex is more than saliva in a can. Salivex improves consumption efficiency by 50%. No more halfway cures like coating your throat with cooking oil to have that extra piece of cake or bowl of kitty litter. After a night out, my tongue tasted like carpet. It was embarrassing. Now with Salivex, I can eat a whole box of crackers or lick my life partner's stamp collection. Oh, night. It's like having a salivation army in my mouth. Now I can suck up lollipop for as long as I want. Salivex tastes like your own saliva. We use salivation philanthropists who make Salivex all day. Salivex, when it comes to personal dryness upstairs, we're deadly serious. Welcome back to K-Chat. My next I'm guest in. is the star of the hit show, Just the Five of Us, where he appears as the rich father of a family of misfits. But more recently, he's working on the controversial theater piece, In the Future, There Will Be Robots, Claude Magdenot. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Amy. However, you have mispronounced my name. It's Madge, which rhymes with badge. Uh, as in duh. And no, as in more than you. Madge, no. Anyway, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to discuss my art. So myself. Because on the one hand, you're on the funniest show in the whole wide world, just the five of us, and on the other, you do those weird theater dance shows which aren't funny. 
Yes, thank you, technical school dropout. I'm sure sitting here talking all day is terribly difficult. Juilliard is not. In the future, there will be robots is not a funny piece. It deals with the most important issues in the world today. Love, pain, suffering, skin-tight pants, and well-stretched groin muscles. But see, music has no name, Amy. It's about depth and texture and sense of community that emerges from the struggle going on. Beast. It's as if Petrushka and Leonard Bernstein were in a ferocious dance competition with switchblades. That is passion, my dear. Um, okay. So it's a bit like just the five of us. What a show! I love Jimmy. He is so cute, even though he looks so young. I'd rather not talk about my complications working with him. I'm a performer. I express myself any way I can, while I'd never attempt to describe just the five of us as anything other than a worshipless cat. I need to support my serious art. It's like stealing a boombox to do live interpretive dance. If I bring joy to people's hearts doing an interpretation of a tree in the park, who is harmed? There is a value I... Overestimate the dreadfulness of the mass market, the degrading excess of the culture, or the horrors that we all have within it. Great, yeah, um, me too. But, as Mr. Chesterfield, you're so funny! What is it you say? Not in my house! <laughs> that gets me every time! Especially after the drunken tramp you adopted has wet himself! Oh, say it for me, please! As they say in France, matrice. Please! Not in my house. Please! I came on your fine show to discuss art, not people that whore themselves out on the altar of commercial success, dancing like a puppet alongside a genetic freak. Although, I do that too. Okay, Moody. So, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. My performance... I am the concert outside myself in the parking lot where we build bonfires and dance. It comes back to the seriousness of my purpose. At a young age, I held puppet shows on the corner that had people weeping and lying down in the streets. It's about movement, about encouraging ordinary, working class people that there is something enervating about a modern dance performance. That seeing in the future there will be robots will change your life, no matter what your life's like now. Kind of like getting a new haircut. Yes, exactly. No, nothing like a new haircut, you halfwit. This is movement. Watch my hand. Yes, movement. There's a manatee on stage. See? Lasers that shoot him down, cut him free, free his soul from the bondage of the past. And then on stage, we have snow that falls and represents love in all its forms. The robot makes a snow angel and we begin to cry. Close curtain. Um, okay. Well, I love just the five of us. Please, 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 enough. Five succeeds while robots starve. Attendance has been poor. If I were opening this with the Orchestra Philharmonica di Jalapa in Mexico, there would be riots in the streets with small children giving me flowers and weeping. Here in Vice City, they wouldn't know art unless it came as a tube of beef jerky. They told me, Claude, it can't be done. Vice City is for sun worshippers and Philistines, and I told... I must save my soul with some serious art. But to be honest, Amy, they were <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel ahead of my time. The best artists are ignored. I mean, surely any right-minded person would rather spend an evening watching me express the meaning of space as I move delicately across the stage in the dance of desire and denigration than flopping around in a disco or a nightclub or sucking the electric teat of television. I know I would. God! I mean, what is wrong with you people? God, my hair. What? My hair is all wrong. It clashes with my dress. Zeus, Cicero, Shakespeare, Flaubert, someone, please save me from this hellhole. My dear, you are so ignorant. I'm trying to save you, to save everyone. You don't see the art around you. 
Are you in search of old Lang Syne's, singing Madame Butterfly on a windowsill, or relegating yourself to a cricket in Huckleberry Finn? I am a movement that conquers love while you complain about your dress. Know you not how important my mission be? Right. Cool. Okay, Mr. Chesterfield, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Magonaut, you gotta hang in there. You're on K-Chat, and I'll be right back. At the law firm of DeLeo and Furex, we understand that sometimes life throws you a curveball. We help our blue chip clients get their lives back after circumstances have conspired against them. Just listen. It was an unfortunate accident that happened to my wife on that precarious cliff. DeLeo and Furex can't bring my wife back, but they made sure I didn't end up in the slammer. I was unfortunate enough to be found with 15 kilos in my spare tire. I was so mad at the auto repair shop that sold me that tire. I'm not seeing any booty here. <laughs>